no. uh, topic we're going to be talking about is traffic and message handling. And I'm not talking about weaving in and out of the cars on 465 on South there. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, traffic composed of messages sent via RF on the handbands on a normal day-to-day -day basis and emergency traffic uh, during times of disasters. Uh, now there are two, basically there are two types of traffic. That's formal and informal. Now we're going to be talking about formal traffic uh, tonight. Uh, informal traffic is like, uh, you know, uh, you may have heard on the net where somebody says, I, I like to have an IF with a, a W9 WS10, either during the net or after the net. And that means, I, you know, maybe I just want to ask David how he's feeling today or something. That, that's informal traffic. But what we're going to talk about is formal traffic or traffic of red, or record. Uh, it's written uh, when received and relayed in the same way that it was taken. One of the primary rules of traffic handling is you never change anything. Even if it doesn't sound right to you, you leave it that way. That is the biggest big deal that there is in traffic handling. Even if uh, you think somebody's misspelled word, now you can query them and ask them, well, is, do I understand the spelling right? But uh, even if it looks wrong, you don't change it when you relay it to whoever you relay it to. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, there are two things in formal traffic, accuracy and brevity, brevity uh, being brief. Uh, those are the two, two big items in uh, message handling. And that means that uh, uh, accuracy is on the top of the rung and brevity is on the bottom rung. If you can't get it brief, get it accurate. That's the main thing, is the accuracy. Okay? Uh, and, uh, okay, rule number two is uh, being brief. You know, don't use a lot of extra words in there. You know, uh, make it as short as you can. The average message is 25 words or less. That's what we like to get. Now, there is a way, and I will explain a little bit later on, how to do a message that is longer than 25 words by splitting it into two separate messages. And then you, you know, the act of uh, writing a message and then passing it over the air to another station takes, to do it fast, <coughs> takes practice. To do it accurately takes practice. So, you know, even if it's a, some kind of dumb little test message, it don't matter. You still made an effort to practice that procedure. All right? Okay. Now, here's the little devil that we're basically concerned about. The basic radiogram. And, uh... <laughs> All right, there are several, or three basic parts to the uh, radiogram. First, we have the uh, preamble, and then the address portion, and then the body, text body, and then the signature. Got that down? Let me uh, see. I got a little. famous little pink, pink sheet from the AWRL. So this is the formal radiogram. Message of record. Got it written down so somebody comes back and sometimes it says, says message number, uh, for example, 347. If you get that delivered, then you can actually show that you did deliver it. 
for, you couldn't deliver. Now usually, and we'll get into what they call service messages in just a little bit about the radio. The radio. First of all, let's, uh, let's look at the heading. Uh, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight items in the heading. The first item is the number. This number is uh, put in here by the station of the origin. It is uh, usually based on a yearly basis, or you can do it on a monthly basis. <coughs> it just depends on how you want to do it. Most of the guys do it at, on about a year. Like uh, this would be number 347 in 2009, for example. Uh, that's probably about the best way to do it. Uh, this this number never changes. When you get it, you transmit it on as number 347. Because you are not the originating sta station. Now, when you become the originating station, then you put your number in there, and it never changes once it leaves you. That number is the amount of <coughs> messages that you're sending. Huh? That number would be the amount of net met, like if it was the first yeah, message just out for the year. That would be the number one of the year. This is like number 347. That's the question. Right. right. Beginning with one. Okay. Beginning the year to the end. Right. All right. Uh, so that's basically about, uh, you know, uh, I will say this right now. If you've got, you know, there's 25 words in a basic method. They don't want you to go any past that if you keep from because, uh, well, it just take too much time. But there are the occasional times when you might, for some reason, you know, let's say you can't say, well, I need this and I need this and I need this, but it takes more than 25 words to get all his uh, items that he's wanting on there. What you do is you take this number and you make it 347A and 347B. Which means that that there's two parts to go in two parts. That's pretty easy to remember. Okay. All right. The next thing is the precedence. How important is this message? Uh, there are four uh, basic precedences in the, uh, message handling. Emergency, which is a top priority. It is to be delivered immediately without uh, waiting uh, as fast as you can by whatever means you can radio or telephone or whatever. Personal will hand it out, you know, knock on the door, whatever. That's the top priority one. And if if you've got, for example, if you've got routine messages on a list for this emergency message, even if it's it goes out first, the others can just wait. They wait till the next day as far as that goes. Uh, the next one is your priority messages. Uh, uh, you know, that's like usually asking for, uh, uh, they're important, but they're, they don't take immediate delivery. They're not life and death, in other words. Uh, you know, uh, maybe you're asking for uh, more, more people to help you in the emergency. That would be a priority message. You know, I mean, you know I'm not saying like the rescue folks, I'm talking